this special telecast to be a blessing and uh, so basically what we just want to do this evening is to you know um, look at the word of faith these are these what's happening in our country and what is happening globally but before we do that I'd like everyone to please if you are seeing us to please share this I'll back I'll back online now so please can we share it with all our friends and our contacts because initial one had gone up. Please come quickly, take about a minute or two to do that. Um, all, all the platforms in church, all platforms, you know, share with our friends. Let's just make sure that we are there and uh, so that we can begin to share. Praise God forevermore. Uh, I'm still waiting for my own feed in here. I can't really see anything. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. Praise God forevermore. Praise God forevermore. So let's let's quickly do that um, and, and just make sure that everyone is watching and uh, we're on the same page with everyone. Hallelujah. So if you are seeing it, just share with your friends and uh, all the officers at the back end. Please let's just share with um, uh, people who, um, you know, we need to share with. Hallelujah. I believe the links have been sent out and everyone is um, on the same page. Praise God forevermore. Amen. At Alpha, we're sending it out. All right. Please just keep on sending it out and um, so that we can invite more people because it's going to be a, a very interesting discussion tonight. And we don't want anyone to be missing out. And um, that's why we're waiting and taking time to do this. Please, can we all do this? So everybody in the studio and everyone out there. And um, All right. So, again, well, welcome to the Telecast. It's a very special fix. I'm now, and I'm here in the studio with two of my very good brothers and friends, my associate pastors, 
To my left, which is your right here, we have Pastor DG Kurumi. We call him PDK. PDK is in the house. We say hello to everyone, PDK. Good evening, everyone. <laughs> and we also have uh, to my right, which is your left, PDA. <laughs> uh, Pastor DJ Adejeb. So we've got PDK and we've got PDA. Pastor DJ Adejeb. That's how we call them here now. So we say PDK uh, because we have two Pastor DG. So if you want to know which one, so you say PDK. That's DJ Kurumi and we say PDA. Pocket Digital Assistant. <laughs> That's Pastor DG and Jerry. So they are both me here. And we are going to have a great time in the name of Jesus. So um, what we want to talk about is that, you know, coronavirus, all that is going on, what is happening? And if you look at uh, the social media, uh, it's gone and gone. People are saying all sorts of things. Some people are saying, is this of God? Some people are saying, is it of Satan? Uh, you've seen some people who, who believe on representatives of God and that God is punishing the church. You've heard all sorts of uh, postulations. And uh, there are some people who also passionately believe it's, um, <laughs> it's, 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 it's from hell, <laughs> and that it, this is Satan, and, and, and so on and so forth. Of course, we also have uh, people who also believe <laughs> that it is human error, and that we're paying for you know, some of the errors, you know, as far as our humanity is concerned. And, uh, so let, let, let me start with PDA, because he operates in the corporate environment as an IT person, and of course, he can also provide some scriptural uh, conceptual underpinning and framework, you know, to underguard what is going on. So PDA, what is going on? Now, <laughs> we want to do faith seminar. We, we want to first of all look at what's happening in society, vis-a-vis, -vis, you know, this. Um, so what's going on from your perspective? What is the Holy Spirit telling you? Um, thank you, Pastor Dilly, for uh, this privilege. Um, of course, there, there is a yeah, Bible says we know in parts yeah. and we prophesy in parts. So there is no perspective that is, you know, all encompassing, you know. But um, when this thing started, I, I was talking to um, my wife recently and it was like since January, February that um, I started feeling uneasy, you know, generally. And it was because I had a dream that scared me. Is that my walking? It's, it's okay. Okay. All right. So it's because I had a dream that, okay. you know, kind of scared me. And, right. you know, um, essentially there was a kind of an accident, like a, like a crash. Okay. And I, I woke up um, and next thing I, I heard this popular uh, basketballer had died. But it was a voice I heard in the dream that I was really more concerned about because I was hearing something like um, we should um, pray for the righteous okay. um, so that um, they would you know, be protected from the impact of, you know, what is coming. But I didn't, you know, I, I, I just felt that, okay, you know, what um, could God be talking about, All right. you know. But that was the first perspective I drew from it in that there was, um, there was, there, there, there is some sort of, you know, um, there's some sort of hunger against the system. But how to position that thinking is why we're here, because we just don't want to create, you know, some form of panic. Yeah, because we're, we're yeah. not anarchists yeah. or some form of... Um, but uh, ever the, since everything started, I, I've tried to look into, you know, almost every plague in the scriptures, you know, just trying to get a, a deeper understanding of um, why things like this so, happen. So I, I like what you just said now. Plague... It's not new. It's not new. I mean, it's, it's yeah. always it's, it's scriptural. We've, yeah. we, we've seen it in the Bible, ah. that's what I mean. So it's not something <laughs> yes. that is... It's not right. new, so. you know. And um, from Noah, yeah. you know, all the way to, um, to David, there was an experience. And, you know, all the various experiences they had in the wilderness, you know, even from Pharaoh letting my people go. Those were plagues, you know. As far as they were concerned, then their world was going to end, you know. Yeah. So there are two categories there are three things i now spotted in like um what really often caused the offshoot of plagues you yeah. know uh, according to the scriptures number one was that the people themselves could be the culprit here you know like we saw in in the wilderness because occasionally there were but there was ne those were never pandemics those were like epi um, you know endemics things that were okay. like limited contained. to a community okay. it was contained yeah so there were, there's the category in which the world system, the leadership of the world itself, were deliberately resisting God's position for that time. We saw that in Pharaoh, because right. Egypt had always been God's delight. And that was because, I mean, of Joseph. 
But the Bible said that um, a king arose that did not know Joseph. So that point, there was a severance from the leadership of, um, with, between the leadership of, of, of um, Egypt and you know, God's position as far as things are concerned. If it, was a, if it was a pharaoh that knew Joseph and God sent a message and said, let my people go, he could have been like, okay, is there anything I can give them? You know, he could have actually just aligned. But because he didn't understand, he didn't meet that Joseph framework on ground. He, mm -hmm. That Joseph system was not, is, is alien to him. He didn't know that. So, I mean, he created that kind of havoc on his country, you know. So that's category two. The third one, of course, is, is the church, you know, uh, more like leaders, you know, the system of the church itself, which could also, you know, lead to uh, this kind of thing. Because uh, also in the scriptures, if you look at David, David was, a, was as man of God as he gets. David was close to the heart of God as he gets. But he violated certain codes, you know, that God put in place. And what we saw immediately was that there was a major epidemic that hit us. I mean, 70 thousand people able men died they didn't even uh -huh. count the women and the children that died yeah. i mean you know what it will mean now to tell you that seventy thousand people <laughs> in the nation you know dies right it's it's going to be crazy you know yeah. we can't even imagine right now somebody telling you that coronavirus has killed seventy thousand people you know but this happened in front of the very face of of a man of god you know mm -hmm. by the and Previously to then, God had been telling David that, you know, leaders of the house must be just. A man who rules in the affairs because of men must, must be just. just yeah. So it was as if he started to, you know, he, he, I mean, because just before the epidemic uh, started, God was talking to David. Yeah. And the next thing we're seeing, David taking a wicked step that seemed to contract. So we saw these three categories. You will see these three categories um, in the scriptures, you know, understanding that, okay, is it the fault of the people? So can, can you quickly go through the three categories again? Now, yeah. first one is... One is uh, the people themselves. Our the lifestyle people themselves. would have evolved in a terrible way, you know. We need so to, you're talking about hygiene, the yes, fact that uh, hygiene, economy, yes. and, uh, politics of Exactly. Needs. You know, even our faith walk, you know, because yeah. some of the things we've been talking about, are we praying enough? People, are people, are be how are believers evolving? Are yeah. we evolving to be more of this AI-empowered uh, generation that believes technology is the answer to everything? And we and, really and should be less of yeah, praying, less exactly, of faith, of faith less of confession. So I think that's where our own personal repentance should start. Okay. But that's not the full picture, I believe. Okay. So the second category is what? The second category talks about the world leaders themselves. The world leaders yes. themselves. Okay. Because the, that when the system, uh, the political system of the world, diametrically opposed to the purposes of exactly. God. Exactly. And there are so many ways to look at it. Um, I, 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 um, yesterday night when um, we're fellowshipping, myself and my wife, and I said that, one of the things uh, I, th I started to perceive was that at a particular point in the growth of world economy in the last three years, yeah. there was something consistently that had been missing. The rich were getting really richer, yeah. and the poor were really getting poorer. Wow. This, the, the system we were setting up was not really empowering anybody. Mm. It, it, that, that, so what, when you build a world that you know, empowers only billionaires, and has no place for the ordinary guy, as it were. You know, I'm not campaigning. And, and for, for interestingly, I, I kind of follow Bernie Sanders as well. You know, I was even telling someone that I, I think this guy has a message. I just don't think America is listening. But you know, the bottom line is that that is an anomaly. Yeah. And at some point, it will reset itself. Oh. You will see that in Psalms. If you go to the book of Psalms, when the Bible reset. was talking about, um, um, uh, let me see, that's Psalms 82. Yes. The Bible was saying that God came to the congregation of the mighty. And when he got to the congregation of the mighty, he was telling them that, look, you guys, <laughs> you, you're on the face of the earth, but the impact, we can read it. If we All go right. to Psalm, um, Psalm 82, right? Let's turn into Psalm 82. You can even put it on the screen for us, please. Psalm 82. Do we have it on the screen? Psalm 82, verse yes. what? But I, I, I will just flow from verse 1. Bible says God stands in the congregation of the mighty. Yeah. He judges among the gods. So this is, this, is, this is God, you know, visiting the mighty men on the earth, as the case may be, mm. you know. And he was telling them that, look, how long? how long will you judge unjustly and show partiality to the wicked? Defend the poor and the fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and the needy. Deliver the poor and the needy. Free them from the hand of the wicked. So... God was trying to state a position that when might, there is, when there, are, there is might on the earth, 
what he expects to see is to see more, you know, afflicted people, you know, released, saved, helped. But when a system starts to create a, that gulf, you know, Bible now talked, if you look at what the Bible says in verse 4, uh, verse 5, it said they do not know, nor do they understand. Bible said they walk about in darkness and all the foundation of the earth are out of course. So that's, that's plague. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so meaning that you will just see that the world system is trying to reset itself. Mm. It's not normal for like maybe two of us in this room to be so rich and then everybody's just so poor. That system cannot, it's not sustainable. Wow. At some point, there's going to be a reset. You know. So, so apart from the spiritual side of yeah. what is going on, there's also the economic side yes, and the yes. political side. Absolutely. You know, let, let me just just say something about that. Could that now be the reason why someone like Bill Gates started conversing for this thing two <laughs> years ago? I'm sorry, telling the world to pay attention you, to you. viral <laughs> infections, to pay attention to malaria. Because the truth about the matter is, it's just like one of us wrote the other day. Because we're talking about things of faith and reason. Like when Paul stood before Agrippa, mm. Paul said, I'm not mad, but I'm talking about, uh, you know, things of faith and reason. We must be reasonable. For example, um, one of the things we need to learn is how to pray the prayer of faith and perhaps how God answers prayer. Mm. The way, just like uh, Brahmana wrote, uh, one of us, where Manatafa did a write-up. Maybe most people don't know what prayer is. Or perhaps uh, the type of prayer that's called the prayer of faith, because it's a faith seminar. Mm. Now, let, let's, let's, let's go to James 5. Now, let's, let's establish that scripturally. Because I, the reason why, in fact, you, you've, you've identified all that is happening, the foundation of the heart is out of course. And when that is the case, this is what you get, that something's going to come up on the face of the earth. And if you are not careful, we would just want to explain it away spiritually, mm. which is what a lot of people do. Because, you know, you've seen people from church saying it is Satan. Some people say God is teaching us lessons. Some people say it is human error. And that's why we're trying to do this faith seminar to say what exactly is scriptural position, what is responsible for this. Because if we don't learn from this, um, if anything of this nature to happen again, you know, it's like, <laughs> that might just, you know. <laughs> so now, look at what he's saying. Now. Because, because the truth about the matter is, is I, I don't think it's a question of prayer. The way people think of prayer religiously. And that's why when I did my write-up, I said, don't let us go to our prophecy and prayer default mm. settings. You know, you, know, you know the way it is when something happens, let's pray, yeah. let's pray. But the truth <laughs> about the matter is this, it's not that people have not been praying. Mm. Because the truth is that if all there is to answer and to counter all that is happening is prayer, then prayer could have stopped it. So, because, I mean, we're talking about every Friday in Nigeria, every time in Nigeria people are praying. Is it that we don't, or, or perhaps God is answering these prayers, mm -hmm. but we do not know that these are answers to prayer, or that after we must have prayed, mm -hmm. there is also a step to take after prayer. Yeah. Because if you look at this now, is there, is there any among you suffering? Like what is yeah. happening now? Let him pray. It's, it, it's in no doubt. I mean, it's clear. He said, let him pray. So nobody is saying we should not pray. Is, is there any cheerful? Let him sing psalms. Yeah. Now, look at verse 14 now. He now says, is there any among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Look at where people miss it. You know, when we quote this verse 15, people quote it that the prayer of faith will heal the sick. That's not what scriptures, that's not, that's not scriptural. The Bible never said the prayer of faith will heal the sick. Look at what the Bible says. And the prayer of faith will save the sick. Mm. Then, comma, and the Lord will raise him up. But that's not the end. So the prayer of faith, we make sure that at least that sick person is in a safe zone. It will save the sick. Do we see? Mm. It will make sure that at least the guy is kept safe. Like what is happening now, we're praying. And that's why I believe a lot of people are protected and are shielded. The Lord will raise him up. But look, look at the next 
statement. If he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Mm. Why is he going to be healed? Look at verse 16. And I said, confess your trespass to one another yeah. and pray for one another that you may be healed. Mm. Wow. Look at where the healing is. It's mm. a third dimension reality. Yeah. Number one, the prayer of faith will save the sick. Yep. The Lord will raise him up. Mm. Then as you confess your faults one to another, you'll be healed. Wow. So that, that will mean, for example, let's talk about our health situation in Nigeria now. Yeah. Even if we survive this, there will still be healing in the land until we tell ourselves some home truths. We need to confess. For example, now this has opened a vista now that we don't have a working health system in Nigeria, quote and unquote. Those are the faults we need to confess to one another. And, and this one, God is not saying confess it to me. He said, look, you guys be frank. Just like you said also that, look, there is inequality in the system. And the system is struggling. The, the, the creature was subject to vanity, to finitivity. Not willingly, but by the reason of it, whom was subjected it in hope. So people must understand that there are faith fundamentals we need to un uncover yeah. if this is not going to repeat itself again. Mm -hmm. and, and one of those things is that, yes, we'll do the prayer of faith, the sick will be saved, but not necessarily healed. Mm -hmm. And if healing is going to happen, there are certain conversations we need to have one another. I said, confess your faults one to another. I mean, we, 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 we see all that is happening in our health system. We see all that is happening in the economy. We see all that is happening. It shows that a lot of things are wrong across board. And that is why I believe God, you know, it's just like in the days of David. I don't want to dwell so much on whether this is God or this is Satan. Mm. Because in the days of David, when the plague happened, one side said, God. <laughs> it's scriptural. Yeah. The other side said, Satan. Yeah. One, one account said, God moved David to number Israel. Yeah. Another account said, Satan moved David to number Israel. Yeah. And, 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 and these are <laughs> what you can call the prophets of their time yeah. recording perspectives. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you can't say one side is wrong, one side is right. Because... Both of them were recorded for us in scripture. But at the end of it all, what happened to David? Okay, God moved David to number Israel. Satan moved David to number Israel. But at the end, at the end of it all, David discovered yeah. the site where the Temple of Solomon would be built. Yeah. David had to buy that land from the, the Jebusite, around the Jebusite. David now discovered, and, and, and by the time David made that discovery, the Bible says that angel that was killing people, God just says stop. So I'm, 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 I'm saying that there are lessons, faith lessons we need to learn from here. Yeah. That prayer is not just praying. Like for example, now we also see a lot of people who said, and that is right and there's nothing wrong with that, that God showed them. You just also give your own perspective now. But we could also see that that is also like 50% of the equation. When the Spirit shows us things, he doesn't show us what is to come so that we will know it's coming. Yeah. He also has a way of giving us strategies. Yes. And that is where Joseph will kick in. That not only, because if we, I mean, this is faith seminar. If we look at Joseph, the dream of Pharaoh in itself is a plague. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, you, you can call it the coronavirus of the time. Look, look at the dream of Pharaoh. Let's, let's analyze that dream. Um, Healthy cattle, healthy ones, very healthy, will be swallowed by disease reading, you know, <laughs> one that is not healthy, yeah. and yet they don't get bigger. Mm -hmm. You look, it can't, it can't, I mean, when we talk about corona, yeah. we talk about whatever, it can't be, it can't be, it's, it's, it's like that. I mean, Praise God forevermore. <laughs> are, we, are we okay, Adam? And, and he said, head of country, the same thing, blasted by this twin, you know. But what did Joseph do in all this? You see, this is where, because you see certain things, this, this is Pharaoh. It, it, it represents the economy of the world, the system of the world. And you see what is happening. But Joseph came into that system and began to speak the purposes of God. And that is where, you know, I have a bit of issues with the fact that, okay, now it's been revealed. Possibly, I don't think there's any serious-minded believer that I've spoken to, we didn't tell me that God showed them one thing or the other about that, the fact that you just said you all now that this is coming. And I think 
the missing link is that we didn't press him further mm -hmm. to now say, okay, God, you've shown us this. It's just like Joseph could have said, well, I've listened to the dream of Pharaoh. I know what is about to happen. But Joseph came forth by the spirit with strategies. Mm -hmm. So Joseph now said, well, we're not going to change what Pharaoh saw. And if you look at the plugin Joseph brought into the system, it wasn't to say the dream of Pharaoh was wrong or we will change what Pharaoh is saying, or maybe what Pharaoh is seeing is Satan. Yeah. <laughs> this is Satan. Let, let's make it God, you know? Yeah. Or, or let's make sure the ill-fated cows <laughs> will never swallow the robust one. Let's begin to pray that that will never happen. The day that should happen, humanity is endangered. You know, we, we can't... But, but see, Joseph not come from that. Joseph saw it. And I think that is where many of us missed it. And that's why we need to learn yeah. now. After we've seen it, did we press further? So now I say, Lord, okay, this is coming. What is the way out? Yeah. So Joseph now began to see the way out. And the, the way out is a 14-year blueprint. Number one, let's understand that the abundance that is coming is just going to last for seven years. I think that was the first revelation God gave to Joseph. And with that revelation, you are good. You are almost 50% through the entire pathway because everybody thought the abundance would last forever. Joseph was the only person on the face of the earth at the time who knew this thing that we call abundance is only going to last for seven years. That means for every plague, for everything that is about to happen, there is a timeline, there is a window God gives us that is called the years of abundance to deal with it. And that is why he shows people things up front, so that we can come into that space that is called the years of abundance. Because it, you, can't, you can't start preparing for farming in the years of farming. Yeah. So you can only prepare for the farming in the years of abundance. That means in, in the scheme of things, this is the workings of God. Abundance will always come before famine. That means if all of us who saw things two years ago, beginning of the year last year, pressed in into God, possibly by now, I, I mean, what, see, for example now, if, if that was what God showed the pastor, what, that means since last year, possibly you will have started, started gathering together doctors and by the spirit pressing further and get to know that the solution to the system is going to be we need to create vaccine. What is the vaccine for? We don't know. But the Holy Spirit also that showed us that something would happen. Because look at Joseph. What did he do? Create a solution. Then Joseph said, okay, from the end of the seventh year of abundance, this is not what we need to do. But we don't wait until then. Let's start, let's start strategic grain reserve. That means take vaccine like grain. God must give to us a grain strategy to say that, okay, this is what is going to work. Start investing in it. Maybe, for example, now, if... Someone, someone like us have access to Asso Rock. Maybe in the last one year, instead of having faith seminar, since God revealed this to his doctors, faith doctor seminar we're going to be having. So we start bringing all doctors together and start challenging them. Because Joseph did not stop, study stop product reserve engineering. That means Joseph must, must have brought together professionals who understood storage. All that Joseph just provided was the framework. Let's start story. Let's start story. Let's start story. And when the years of farming came, nobody panicked. Mm. And that was under the old covenant. And even Pharaoh himself knew this is the strategy of the Holy Spirit. Because by the time Joseph stood before Pharaoh, Pharaoh said, can we find such a man as this, a man in whom the Spirit of God is? So that's the operation. That, that, that is the operation of the Holy Spirit. Mm. And that is what prayer does. You see, prayer is not just an end in itself. Like the way we say, let us pray, let us pray. And that's what we've been doing. It's our default setting. But you see, when we pray, there, there are steps to take after praying. We need to get blueprints. We need to know that this is what is coming. Because God will never leave himself without a witness. And he will never leave his people without a witness. If something is going to happen on the earth, just like we've seen Joseph representing a, a lower hand of the Abrahamic covenant, because if the piece of condemnation written and engraved in soul was glorious, Joseph manifested the ministry of the Spirit without the blood, without the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit, without uh, the New Testament coefficient, without Jesus Christ, you know, the way we know him today. That means he just showed us the lower hand. And look at what the lower hand achieved. He saved the entire world from an imminent, I mean, meltdown that... And, and instead of Joseph, where Joseph was to suffer for it, he gave them an opportunity to become the world power. Just like we said about David now. The plague made David to discover the building site for, you know, the temple. Now, this one made Joseph to reposition Egypt from a local economy into global economy. Just imagine. 
all the born again doctors in Nigeria prepared for this. Mm. And by the Spirit, we knew this was coming. I mean, a pastor like me, I feel guilty too. Instead of you know gathering together pastors and and and, and church folks, we, we focused on doctors because focused on health physician, those who are believers, just like Daniel. And the thing, the secret is delivered to us in a night vision, and we're just doing this, you know, uh, vaccines and storing it. And for such a time as this, you could imagine that one discovery could have made Nigeria whopper. Imagine Nigeria now. In Nigeria, we have these vaccines now that can save the entire... Even if you say we're going to send one tablet and one billion dollars, <laughs> you, you can imagine there are nations who are ready to yeah. buy. So yeah. let us learn from this. Because you see, you could see that a lot of people in the church and many of us are panicking. That's not... It, it, once as God's people, we panic. Yeah. That means we missed something in God. Yeah. We missed something in God. Pastor Deji, let's hear from you as we continue. Please, as you are joining us, make sure you are inviting all the people. This is going to be very, very interesting. We're just starting. We're, we've not even got into the mainstream of what we want to discuss tonight. <laughs> but the Holy Spirit is helping us. So please invite people. Let's begin to share. And don't just enjoy this alone. This is strategic. And I believe God is speaking to the body. PDK. Uh, PD, yeah. uh, happy birthday, sir. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, Thank you very much. When you say we've not got into the <laughs> And I feel so blessed already. Um, what do I have to say? I mean, everything has been said. <laughs> but um, uh, I think that just some, um, some principles that should sort of undergird the hearts of every believer. Um, when something like this happens and, you know, breaks loose, particularly on a global stage like this or you know something having global proportions where uh, the leaders of this world are you know fretting um, scared um, there is so much uncertainty all over uh, politically economically um, the world is is in uncertain times and um, the market, the economy, doesn't like uncertainty. Once there is uncertainty, a lot of things start to happen, which is what we're seeing happen. I think the first thing for every believer is to understand that, um, I think I was sharing this on Sunday as well, that this is not taking God by surprise. Um, everything that has happened, uh, has happened within the ambit of what God has permitted to happen. And if there's anything we would know about God, he's not, he's not haphazard, he's not purposeless in the sense that when he allows things to happen, uh, particularly at, at, you know, with such proportion as uh, the COVID-19 is, is happening globally, um, then there's a purpose behind it. Um, anything that God permits on the face of the earth clearly has a divine message, has a divine purpose, and I think this is the time for the body of Christ and believers, just like you have said, to press in and um, try to understand the times, seek understanding, seek knowledge, to understand the times by the Spirit. It is very clear that uh, what has become a pandemic in itself didn't fall upon us suddenly. In, in that sense. I mean, we all saw how um, the counts kept going up in China, and um, global leaders were, were just aloof, so to speak, and just thinking, okay, it's going to start and end right there in China. And the thing kept growing, and it's as if it just took a global proportion very, very suddenly. A few counts, oh, we just have just a few counts, and then it's ballooning and it's ballooning and getting into the thousands. And we're like, okay, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> what exactly is going, going on, on here? here? <laughs> you know, and um, so the first thing, like I said, is there's a purpose in the mind of the Father to permit this to happen. The work of believers is to seek the heart of the Father to see what have we missed that we need to correct, or what do we need to be doing in this time and in this season. Because the other thing that 
you know, has also accompanied this. And I said in one forum, and I was still speaking to one of you know, earlier today, and, you know, just seeking to have an understanding. Um, and I'm seeing that really from everything we can see published out there and all of that, the world is still sort of learning about this virus. You know, there are hard questions that are not really being answered. And as I keep asking those questions, I see that we still really don't have all the answers. Um, but one thing is clear to me, and that was the first thing I had to ensure that, you know, I guard against and admonish every believer to guard against, that the, the spirit of fear and panic that is riding on the wave of this virus doesn't get to you and get into you to the extent that it distracts you from God himself. Um, the uncertainties happening around, uncertainties at global levels, at national levels, subnational levels, down to homes and individuals. There's a lot of uncertainty yeah. because it's, it's tough to predict when this would come to an end. It's tough to predict, you know, when would this thing kick back into reversal. Mm -hmm. As someone said, some economies are already in recession, but a lot of attention is still around save lives and stem the virus. When all of this is all done and dusted, then, then we can begin to look at and assess the damages. Human lives, but, you know, um, in terms of the economic climate as well, yeah. the progress of nations and so on and so forth, that affects the common man on the street. And I think one of the things that we would also see um, in this that I'm seeing as a strain is that this pandemic um, has no respect for pocket, has no <laughs> respect for status, and um, it seems to be something hitting the strong and the mighty. And, and you know, if we, it's important to pay attention to this. Uh, like I was saying in, in the forum, you know, it's the elites that typically travel through the airports and go on business travel or vacation or whatever. Um, the Mekunu, as we call them, um, some of them have not seen the four walls of, of an airport, for example. And the elites meet with elites, shake hands, hug, and so on and so forth. And we are seeing that the places where this pandemic is most pronounced are areas with very vibrant economy. New York wow. is the center of world economy and that has the biggest count um, of the virus case in the wow. entire united states of america mm. it's affecting capitals lagos abuja that's where you find the highest cases yeah. here locally and you can look globally and see that the economic capitals of the world is where this thing is most prevalent yeah. and that that is a sign for us as believers and you know mm. i would connect to you know what uh, pda you know had shared earlier in terms of it looks as if there is a force to reset things. You can see the billionaires and multi-billion dollar companies globally, they understand that there is no billions without, <laughs> without people, without a stable economy. And so they are donating also in tens of billions and in billions. I was seeing something being rolled out by, you know, one of the Nigerian, you know, uh, billion dollar companies because i mean if you look at their net profits um or accumulated profits or balance sheet and you can see how they are rolling out the money you know to say look let's let's build out healthcare systems let's build this out and all of that and um these are sectors that hitherto been you know forgotten you know left behind uh there are those you know like uh Manotafa was pointing out to me uh donating to to push education and so on and so forth and so we're seeing a level of philanthropy that we've probably never seen before and probably would not have seen except for the fact that you know this there's global happening. uncertainty yeah, yeah, so your yeah. billions really become useless <laughs> if everybody is sitting at home and the country is not moving forward you know the truth the truth about matter is um just like what pastor was saying 
And that's just like what we're saying today. After we pray, we must understand certain fundamentals, one of which, for example, malaria kills more people every year than coronavirus. I mean, on the average, malaria kills over a million people every year. So that means in the last 20 years or thereabout, malaria must have killed over 20 million people. I mean, if we take an average of uh, a million per year, but, but, but nobody in the church is praying against malaria. I mean, see, that is where prayer becomes worrisome, if we are praying the way we are praying. Because the truth about the matter is this, if suddenly God is now asking us to decree, to legislate against coronavirus, because it's now a pandemic and it's something that is affecting the elites. Yeah. Like you said, airports are shut down, you can't travel, you know, your, your, your foreign account, domestic account is as useless as anything now. And suddenly there's this, let's pray against it, let's pray against it, it's from hell. But there, there are many deadly things on the face of the earth, dysentery. Is it that the Holy Spirit is not asking us to pray against those ones, <laughs> or the Holy Spirit is not raising yeah. believers to provide solution to those ones because they happen in the villages yeah. and suddenly the only thing the Holy Spirit is concerned about is coronavirus. I don't, I don't, see those are, those are the concerns and those are the lessons we need to learn as the church that possibly we are looking in the wrong direction in the sense that um, somebody after this, because look, the whole essence of this faith seminar is not to condemn anybody or to say we, we, we got it wrong or we didn't do it right, is to say, possibly going forward, some faith-filled believers who are listening to us, who are medical personnel, should start trusting God for solutions to cure malaria by the Spirit. I mean, that's where we begin from. You know, if, 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 if everybody's afraid of corona, 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 and, and there are more deadly diseases on the face of the earth, then is, it, is that not putting a cat before the horse that suddenly the only thing we want to conquer is corona? I don't know. Can somebody change the statistics for me? How many people died? So it's, it's 405. So okay, far. as at 2018, yeah. sorry, I was looking at malaria. Okay. 405,000 deaths in 2018 from malaria. I think it's, uh, it's about 2,000 yeah. people died daily from malaria. 2,000 daily? The World Health Organization. So that would be how many in a year? That's... And three is five. <laughs> so we're talking about how many people? Like almost, a million. almost a million people. So you, you could see that one of the things that is a wake up call to believers on a faith lane, just like Joseph, is to begin to think more of malaria, dysentery, and to trust the Holy Spirit for solution. You know, instead of just focusing on the because these things are killing more people. Yeah. Imagine something taking out 800,000 people every year. Every year. And if, if we approximate it, because it's not everything that's going to be captured on the data of the WHO. And that's why it's safe to uh, uh, estimate it to about a million. So in the last 20 years, for example, now we're talking about 20 million people. And yet, there's no public, public outcry. And that's why because, we're like... Because it does not affect... Because, exactly. So, <laughs> because if, if you look at Psalm 72... I, I'm going past it. If you look yeah. at Psalm 72, the Lord told Solomon, David began to pray for Solomon because we're talking about praying on the faith lane. And one of the things David prayed for Solomon was that wealth will come. David made it abundantly clear that unto him shall be given the gold of Sheba. Prayer shall be made continually for him, and daily shall he be praised. So David prophesied that the gold of Sheba was coming to Solomon. And without much ado, the queen of Sheba came, and she brought the gold of Sheba, because David said so. But David also said, with this level of wealth, we also come responsibility for you, Solomon. You must deliver the needy when he cries, the poor and him that has no helper. And you could imagine, wow. that was how Solomon started. Wow. The first breakthrough Solomon had in kingship was to deliver the needy. Yeah. Remember the two women. Yeah. So, but as, as God began to bless Solomon, he started becoming elitist. Yeah. To the extent now that he now started oppressing the yeah. people. Mm. So that means the anointing upon Solomon is, is, is 
the, the core efficient is that you must take care of the poor and the needy. Mm. And I think it's the same David anointing that is upon the church and upon believers today. Because you see, people can sit there and all they are doing is be, be attacking the church, yeah. be abusing the church. But what we don't also understand that it is individuals within the church that make up the church. Yeah. So, so if there are doctors now in the church, yeah. then we look at the doctors and we're like, if God has blessed you, you've studied medicine, yeah. you are successful, begin to think in the line of Psalm 72 that you must deliver the poor. Mm. And so, so that means malaria mm. is, is small. If there are biblical interventions, mm. Holy Spirit filled interventions to cure malaria, we will do much. We, we will see more of the power of God at work than coronavirus. Mm. And that is why, you know, to now stay on coronavirus because it's now the one that is obvious or that is apparent without looking at data of other things that are killing people, mm. is, is, is to make that same mistake Solomon made. Because at the end of it, it was Solomon now started oppressing the people. You know, by the time he died, and Israel had that constitutional conference, he said, your so. father oppressed us. Mm -hmm. So we must understand that as believers on the faith lane, the responsibility is on us. Mm. Uh, well, government, yes, we do theirs. But beyond government, an individual believer on the faith lane must have a faith project yeah that is tending towards solving the problems of the poor and the needy, not just the problems of the elite. I tell you, mm. and I kid not, we all know, if this coronavirus were to be happening in villages and in local settings alone, mm. nobody's going to, I mean, you see, all these, Lassa I declare, let us, in fact, we're, we're talking about Lassa fever. Do, do we know that Lassa fever is still killing a lot of yes. people? Yeah, and, and, and this outcry is not, you know, so why suddenly it's now something that is not allowing us to travel again, and, that's making a, and, and suddenly there's now this outcry that is of God, is of Satan. <laughs> I, I think one of the lessons we must learn, without blaming anybody, is all of us, is that we, we have all become elitists. Mm. And that is why we must go back to the gospel that is providing solutions to what is bedeviling the poor and the needy, PDA. Hmm. <laughs> Thank you, PD. <That's> <laughs> wow, wow, a lot is, is flowing here. And um, there, I think there are two line of thought I'm also taking from what PD no, you, you, please, don't, don't lose that thought in the psalm no, you are reading. No, no, because no. that psalm <laughs> is loaded. But yes, let's look at that psalm again. Know. So, um, but let's backtrack a little bit because PD mentioned something about the warning signs that could have come to people yeah. who are supposed to be prophets. But they would not just um, pay attention or do what they are meant to do. The first thing I'd like to say is that really, all hope is not lost yet. There are steps we can start taking now and, you know, to actually cut short these days. We know that. So it's not all yet global, 50 million people dying yet. We're not there yet. So whatever solutions are in your head right now, this is really the time to actually provoke that faith work and do something you've never done. But again, there was a prophet that God sent to Ross before now. The only unfortunate thing is that He's not a pastor. <laughs> His name is Bill Gates. <laughs> oh, yeah. I saw some. I said, look, forget all this prophecy I'm hearing now. That the, this prophet is more accurate than all the ones coming out in January, February, when they had a one. You know, you I, know just to bottle that. <laughs> you know, that was exactly what the Lord said. He said, I will send to you prophets and wise men. Exactly. And I said, some of them you will stone. Yes. So that means the Lord is saying, there are two ways I convey <laughs> messages on the earth. True prophets. And true wise and men. True wise men. Sir, please, there's even so, so something... So Bill Gates, I mean, by all standards, is a wise man. He's a because wise man. he saw these things. Yes. Now, sir, the, 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 the part of this that got to me was because I think I, I, I'm talking to the body of Christ now. I hope somebody is here who knows. It's the fact that we can't ignore wisdom that God is depositing in the world. You know, we are so heaven bound, tongue talking, um, enemy falling. You know, our world is just wrapped into that bubble. And for me, it's part of the things God is going to deal with in this setting. And that's because we don't pay attention to the kingdom. We just stay in the church. Because it was a kingdom occurrence. Bill Gates come, came up four years ago and told them that, look, the threat to human... I, I, interestingly, it's not now that I watched that video. Actually, 
saw that video earlier. But I, I just felt that. I mean, what was this guy talking maybe, about? Maybe you didn't take him as a prophet. No, they, they're amazing, <laughs> but I didn't. But, sir, but there was something that I now noticed. Yeah. There was something I noticed. There was, there was one um, scripture, one understanding that um, the Lord gave when it uh, comes to uh, how the devil operates on the face of the earth. Wow. You know, we, we talked about the fact that oh, whether it's devil, whether it's God, it really doesn't matter. Yeah. Because truly... Please, I hope you are truly, sharing. We're inviting people. Truly. Because we went off, we're back. When we pay attention to... Sorry, please. And please, if we have questions, we can begin to send those questions. I thought we help us to compile those questions so I can start answering them from there. Because I don't want to be focused on this so that uh, my mind can be here. All right? You know, so, yes, it's part of the lessons the church should learn. I think we should be more strategic. You yeah. know, TBC had stayed in this lane for some time. But I think we, in TBC and for those who identify with the kind of faith message we teach here, we need to be bolder. We need to actually stop being politically correct. We need to actually do and say what we need to say. What often happens to me over time is because I have a lot of these ideas, but I'm also also in my corner like, okay, there are people out there, you know, who do these things, and you know, I just I love my peace, I love my space, uh -huh. you know, but I'm not realizing <laughs> that no, no, it was, yes, there's a problem, yes, yeah. you know. But where I'm going is the yeah. is the is the is the strategy that Christ Himself gave to us. Wow. Yes, it could be the devil that is bringing this, but Christ gave us three steps. He said the, the devil, the enemy comes. You know, um, to, 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 steal, to steal, to kill, to kill and, and to, to destroy. destroy. And the revelation there was the fact that, you see, the devil doesn't just roar at you. He, there is always a stealing that <laughs> takes place. <laughs> and then he steal. leaves crumbs that could go into data points for wise men to use. Mm. The next stage you're going Please to see. Repeat that again. <laughs> when the devil comes to steal, yeah. he leaves crumbs. That mm. are data points that become data points for so the wise, wise men, men to use. Already they know that exactly. something is stolen already. Exactly. The next time he's going to come because he's watching, we, we do nothing. And truly, some of us got these signs then. Truly, we did nothing. There was no cry, there was no provocation in the system. I mean, you know, but you're going to see death next. Probably you hear things like Ebola that really scared people. Then he came again, you know, probably dropped those crumbs. And again, you know, this is death. Then if we do nothing, you're going to see destruction. It's, a, it's, a, it's the way it graduates the strategy. And Christ wanted us to know this, and that's why he was saying it up front, that look, you don't need to wait until it brings destruction before we start to act. Let's mm -hmm. talk about Daniel a little bit. While I believe that, I think the church is wrong by not being strategic, by not paying attention to the wise men in the kingdom, yeah. not just pastors and prophets. Mm -hmm. Daniel said, me, Daniel, I understood by books. Meaning that he did not, he consulted references that informed him that, look, something is, is, is due. And then his prayer started at that point of consult. It's not when widespread disaster now unfolded. That's, that's not the time you now see the, you know, um, Daniel you know, praying prayer. So he started his prayer early. The prayer we are praying now, indeed, we should have started much earlier. The time a wise man like Bill Gates said that, the church could have gotten into action. That, look, oh, there's a word there. Maybe one of our leaders or any of us could have gone to the place of prayer and like, this man is saying something. Is this thing indeed true? Is there anything we should be doing now to pay attention, you know, to salvage this thing if it ever comes? You know, so we don't, we're just all boxed up in our four walls, you know, tongue talking, demon chasing, wow. you know, enemy, you know, cast down. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we, you know, we just, we're not strategic at all. And it's part of the things we need to take out of this, you know, um, as believers. Let, let's look at that scripture passage you just said. Can, can you put it on the screen? Matthew 23, 34. Very, very strategic scripture. Matthew 23, 34. It said, therefore, indeed. I mean, if you have my type of Bible, it's written in red. These are the very words of our Lord Jesus Christ. It didn't even say, I will send you. It's present continuous. I yeah. send you. Okay? I send you. That means this... This is happening every time. Look at it. I send you prophets, hmm. comma, wise men, hmm. and hmm. scribes, hmm. those who have data. Yeah. Wow. But, but I think over the years, we only listen to prophets. Yeah. <laughs> so wow. once a person doesn't sound like prophets without prophetic nuances or the prophetic toga, we, we say it can't be from the Lord. I mean, it's going to be from the Lord. It's going to be from the Lord. <laughs> Especially if it does not come and, and he doesn't come to say, Does say the Lord, yeah. this plague that is coming. Imagine if somebody 
<laughs> we started in the church that come four years ago, just like Bill Gates came and said, Don't say the Lord now, under four years, there's going to be viral infection, there's going to be legendary. Let's start preparing. We all start preparing. <laughs> but, but, but you see, prophets, according to what the Lord said now, just like what you just said, the Lord gave us three levels. Prophet is just one level. Wise men, scribes. So there are, there are those on the face of the earth referred to as wise men. They are not necessarily prophets. And there are those who might not be wise, who might not even like the lifestyle of the guy, yeah. but it's a scribe. Yeah. A scribe is someone who can describe, who can prescribe, circumscribe. <laughs> Anything scribe. Yeah. That means they as, have a scribe. <laughs> that means the guy has data. Yeah. He can, he can, he can. Uh, do, you, do you see this guy that, that comes to channels whenever they are data analysts? I, 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 I forgot the name. There's something Ogushake or something. Yeah. I mean, you see, Ogusho, Ogusho. that kind of guy, the guy has data. That, yeah. That's his scribe. Bismarck Rewane, that's his scribe. Yeah. So they might not be executors. They might not be. But, but there's something you can rule out. God, and, and look at Jesus. Look at, let's read again. He said, therefore, indeed, I send you mm. prophets wise men hmm. and scribes and say some of them you will cre 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 and crucify and some of them you will scourge in your synagogue and persecute them from city to city because they don't wear color hmm. and where will the scourging come from from the christian community hmm. you scourge them in your synagogue you are like what is he trying to say he doesn't know the holy spirit yeah, it's not you know <laughs> we must also realize <laughs> why did the prodigal son go back home the prodigal son went back home because he realized that the father, apart from having sons, also had mm. hired servants. Mm. So hired servants are those who are doing the beating of the father on the face of the earth, but not necessarily born of the father. But there is this vital link between hired servants and, and, and the will of the father, that they execute the will of the father on the face of the earth by, by design, by default, but the only thing is that they are not born of the father. Mm -hmm. And it was because the guy taught. He said, mm -hmm. I'm a servant of my father. I have enough to eat and to spare. That was where he went back home. Mm -hmm. So I think we are beginning to learn certain lessons on the faith lane also that God in the kingdom, in church, we are prophets. In the kingdom, we are prophets, wise men, mm -hmm. and scribes. And it will be good by the grace of God in as much as because, you see, God is not super spiritual. God is supernatural. That means even by observing natural phenomenon, when we listen to the prophet, there are also those on the face of the earth who can give us uh, the natural sequencing of things. And by the time we look at those things, it's just like Pharaoh. Mm. Pharaoh was not born again. So you, you can call Pharaoh a wise man. Why is he a wise man? He was a wise man yeah. because... He understood the fact that whenever you have issues, you have to look for solution. Yeah. And it was a king that was willing to look for solution, even in the most unlikely places. Mm. Imagine they told him somebody in the dungeon had the solution, and he was willing to give it a try. And they told him somebody who was not even an Egyptian, somebody who was an Israelite mm. at that time in Egypt. It's just like somebody that was not part of that civilization, yeah. and they said the guy had solution, and he was willing to listen to the guy. Wow. So you could see, you could see wisdom. If I may chip in, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, as you were just speaking, uh, even when our Lord Jesus Christ was born, wise men, he was wise men from the <laughs> east, first. astrologers who could read the stars that knew something phenomenal had happened. That happened. But the prophets, <laughs> the pro in fact, <laughs> when in, they called them, they were story. still prophets. No, no, no. In that story, it was not the wise men that reject the consciousness of the prophet. Yeah. Because when they came and they're like, where is it that's been born the king of the Jews? Herod now called all the scribes. Mm -hmm. And then said, where is it going to be born? That's and they now say, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is where it's going to be born. Yeah. And so we're, we're learning. And like we said, we, in our ministries, it's our style, we don't condemn anybody. We don't, we, we all accept responsibility for this. So that next time we know we must deliver the poor and the needy when they cry. Before I come back to PDK, let's, let's look at Psalm 72. Who's going to give us Psalm 72? Please, as, as we're watching, let's be inviting people. And um, at that, please, let's reach out the more. 
uh, because we want to make this as interactive as possible. When we went off, a lot of people left. Let's, let's get them back. I mean, look at, look at what he said here. This, is, this was uh, the prayer of David that, you know, uh, created uh, the environment in which uh, someone was going to operate. So in verse 10, he, he has said, the kings of Tarshish and of Ice will bring present, the kings of Sheba and of Sheba will offer gift. I hope we have it on the screen. All kings shall fall down before him, and all nations shall serve him. Why is, why is he giving him this level of influence? Look at verse 12. He said, for the reason is that he will deliver the needy when he cries. I mean, the needy has been crying. Malaria, dysentery, you know, some of these things. And I think, I think again, where we need to also make certain adjustments in the church is that we, we, we think this thing is government. An individual person in church, don't forget Bill Gates is not government now. An individual person within the church can have solutions. Yes. And I think that's what we need to start believing God for post-COVID-19. Individuals within the church must believe God yeah. to have solutions. We, we, it's not everything we have to depend on wait on government for. Individuals must have solutions. And I'm, I'm very particular about that. And we need to believe God. So he said, he will demand it. He said the poor and him who has no helper. He will spare the poor and the needy, and he will save the souls of the needy. He will redeem their life from oppression and violence and pressures and their blood being his side. And he shall live, and to him shall be given the good of Sheba. So that means this Davidic, which is a type of Christ here, this kind of anointing, because this is the, uh, you know, what produced Christ, yeah. must be done in such a way that we take care of the poor and the needy. That means we, we look for solutions by the Spirit that's going to tackle what the poor and the needy. And, and that's what we create as so. So, again, now, we're defining some things there. Please, I hope we're okay. And those who are watching us online, see, we're, as we're praying in the Spirit, this is how we should be praying. Now, let's begin to pray and trust God for social enterprises. Yes. So that means going forward, every believer should be a social entrepreneur. That means we're looking at imbalances in the society. I mean, imbalances happening everywhere. And all we are doing going forward is to make sure we're addressing every unjust equilibrium and that we see in our society. That means we're paying attention to the needy and the poor. And, and we're starting businesses and organizations, not for profit, but to Correct those anomalies. And until we have this kind of mindset, the next wave of the church will not evolve. And yeah. the next level of what God wants to do with us. Yeah. And the next level of wealth. Because you could see immediately that is done. You see that again. And I'll say the abundance of the grain on top of the mountain is full shall wave like Lebanon. And those of the city will flourish yeah. like gas of the earth. And legacy. He said his name shall endure forever. His name shall continue as the sun. Men shall be blessed in him. And all nations shall call him blessed. Wow. So the way to go forward is that every believer must trust the Spirit of God to begin to operate within us in such a way that we create what is called social intervention and social enterprises to deal with unjust equilibriums in the society and to just make sure that those things are corrected. That is how we go forward. And that is what the Holy Spirit is waiting for. Because... Trust me, I'm speaking by the Spirit now. After COVID-19, wealth is coming to the body. But it's not just going to be the wealth the way it is. It has come normally. Well, we're, we're speaking by the Spirit now. It's going to come in such a way that it is individuals who are ready, yeah. hmm. who have some kind of social enterprise and social interventions, who are not greedy again, who are looking the way of the needy and the poor. Because believe me, those are the people God is, you know, asking us to focus on now. And, and, and possibly that's why we get, you see, we don't know why he's doing it. But he's a kind of wise man because look at, look at the money he's making, but look at how he's spending it. He's looking at the poor and the needy. And that's why you see such individuals, God will continue to bless them and there's nothing anybody can do about it. And, but we don't now wait until, you see, what, what we have seen so far is that, we're, we're, most people have not waited until when it is now inevitable. Mm. And I don't think, I think going forward, we're structuring the prayer of faith now so that we know that prayer is not just praying against. 
You know, we pray against, we pray against. Praying is that, okay, this has happened. Going forward, what do we do? Praying is praying solutions. Yes. Not necessarily praying against the problems. Yes. I think our default state was that, oh, it has happened, pray against it, pray against it, pray against it. It's, yes. it's from Satan, it's from God, it is a human error. God is judging the world. You see, all those things don't really count. Okay, this has happened. What is the way forward? The way forward is that we must get practical intelligence by the power of the Spirit. And what the Spirit will begin to communicate to us is the various dimensions of social enterprise that will correct imbalances, unjust imbalances in society. And before you know it, the next level of wealth will come and there'll be stability. And you will see that the purposes of God can never be defeated. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> now we'll come, we'll come to PDA. Okay. Um, I don't know if there's a concluding thought, but there are... Please, if you have questions, don't forget you can, you can yeah. begin to send the questions now, um, to us. And... I think we have, we started hitting on some things like solutions now. And yeah. Especially talking about that leaders should be, they should act now when it comes to killing and coming inequality, you know, uh, distribution of, of, of resources of wealth, you know, to mm -hmm. every corner, you know, of the country. You know, um, there was another instruction that I heard, but I don't, I would just hope that we can take that through to our studies and which says that stop, church to stop using politics as a system to assist the will of God. I, I, now, where that, um, what that is saying in essence is that I think we should stop choosing leaders because they are amen corner kind of leaders. I, I, mm -hmm. I don't know if you understand what that means. It means that, like, just like we, I think we've already identified, God is with wise men. God is with you know, when it comes to governance, it's not a born again or church affair, as it were. You know, as we often used to kind of um, incline our decision to actually choose leaders. You know, um, I'm just hearing that in my, like something we should really take note of. You know, it's all part of what we're talking about here. And then, of course, um, the body of Christ is also currently distracted when it comes to the large congregations and, you know, how we just want... There, it, the distraction is there. And right now, this is really the time and the opportunity to actually start doing things unprecedented, like converting some of the... some, some centers to, to, iso, to, to else, you know, uh, places where even people can isolate themselves. Now, there, there is a problem in the system now. It's not even coronavirus. It's not COVID-19. It's the fear. PDK mentioned that. Mm. That fear is wrecking more havoc than the, the virus, virus itself. itself yeah. We have to have solutions now to increase the confidence of people, you know, and help to drive up, you know, um, you know, the ability to, you know, to reduce that fear. And there are two things in my spirit. Like I said, we're standing here, we don't know who's listening, you might have the hair of government, you know. But the government right now, now, you need to empower nurses. That's, I'm, I'm talking about like, make that thing attractive now. Wow. You, you see, I, I get it that, okay, oh, they are, you know, like they, what they used to say those days, that the reward of teachers is in heaven, and that's why everybody here is so backward, you know. In time. <laughs> Nurses, the people on the front line, I think somebody needs to tell the government if you can double their pay, salaries now do it. This is the time to get people to, you know, there is a balance to that. More importantly is to train more people, more health workers from just everybody. Because of course, while we we, everybody is inside their homes, who is taking care of the people there? So mm -hmm. there has to be a strategy to encourage volunteers to come into the system and you know, train in basic nursing and you know, help. Because <laughs> you know, we're hearing this thing, I know we're, you know, the prayer is ongoing that it should not rise from 51, but that is the problem because we, we, we have this hibernating culture where, okay, yeah, we are praying that the cases should not go from 51 to, to 200 tomorrow. You know, we have that, and then we're there praying, and then nobody is doing anything. You understand? So, so right now, I mean, the recommendations are here. Convert some of those empty churches, some of the, convert them to centers, isolation centers, and encourage people to be nurses so that they can take care of people. You know, that's one. More importantly is the fact that um, I, was, I was just trying, this is a technology kind of thing. Now, we're talking about testing. You know, I was telling somebody, I said right now, ordinary malaria plus fear is equal to coronavirus in somebody's mind. Wow. Ordinary common cold plus fear is equal to coronavirus in people's mind. So you're at home, oh, oh, you have a little fever, but you're like, okay, 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 okay. Maybe it is coronavirus. <laughs> and nobody has an answer to that. Now, what they do in developed environments is that they 
pump resources into this thing called testing so that people can actually go, you know, check themselves. You must, that environment must be conducive. It must not be a kind of place where you feel that they're going to just, you know, convert you to a prisoner immediately, that kind of a thing. So Just like people test for pregnancy. Exactly. They, they could make, release an make, app now. Make it very portable. Exactly. What that app can do is to allow people, you know, to book, enable, enable anyone that feels the symptoms to book a test. Now, the booking of a test doesn't equal to taking the test immediately. Because we know the testing resources are actually quite Limited, few in number. Yeah. But having a database, a system that allows you to, you know, um, queue up and then schedule, and then they can tell you that, oh, okay, your testing is open now. You know, you can visit this place to get your test. Creating that kind of system can let citizens know that, okay, the government is doing something. You're creating opportunities for people to get, because the fear is there. But if someone can test you now and tell you that, oh, what he's doing is not coronavirus, immediately it's a form of, you know, invalidation, some excitement for you. You're like, okay, you know, thank God for that. I, I read about some story of one guy that he had all the symptoms and he went there that he must be tested, that he's, he's about to die right there. They need to test him. And they, they told him that, look, after testing, you are negative. He said, but I have, he said, no, that is not just about the symptoms, you know. The bottom line is that how do we deal with that fear? The government must act in favor of dealing with fear, not just responding to the disease itself. And there are things they can do, you know, to reduce that or to make that, you know, the environment more conducive and not spread fear in the system, you know. That's just one of the recommendations I have here. Wow, wow, wow. Pretty. That's so. Um, believers who are high tea people, now this is a time, again, to trust the Holy Spirit for solutions. You see, you didn't, you didn't go to study IT, just to develop perhaps to make money. Let's be socially responsible. That's why we're talking about social enterprise. Especially for such a time as this. We, we must understand that, for, for example now, I, I've not seen anybody doing any app or anything uh, tech in that regard for malaria. I don't know whether there is. Can I ask you? And, and dysentery, those things. You see, these are things that are with us. So if you're an IT person and you're a believer, you have a level of understanding of how to build, how to do coding, you know, whatnot. This is the time we have to trust the Holy Spirit. You know, in, in the prison, Joseph was already an administrator. So administration was in Joseph. Even, even when he found himself in Potiphar's house, he organized Potiphar's house. When he found himself in prison, the Comptroller General had to hand over everybody to Joseph. And in the prison, he started interpreting the dreams of other people. So you see, paying attention to the environment, to what is going on in our immediate environment, it is a big plus yeah. on the faith lane. And you also have to understand, and, and this is big, that on the faith lane, one of the things God does is to first of all get you to prefer solutions to something that is also bothering you. Look at Joseph. I'll use Joseph and Abraham as examples. Now look at Joseph. Joseph's dream, his own dreams, were hanging in the hair. Mm -hmm. But you see Joseph interpreting the dreams of the butler and the baker. The lowest people in the society, they were in grand zero. Mm -hmm. Just like what is happening now, grand zero. You can't be lower than the dungeon. Yeah. <laughs> So instead of Joseph looking forward to interpreting the dream of the king first, which is what a lot of IT guys are trying to do, they're looking for a place where you're going to do one big thing, Bill Gates mm. will buy, and, and you, you mm. just become a billionaire. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, we want, yeah. we want young people to aspire. Young people must be visionary. And told what did you understand? We must have vision. But we're also saying, young people should also understand that when we're in grand zero, and we're all in the dungeon, <laughs> like what is happening now? There are butlers and bakers beside you. Those are the poor and the needy. Yeah. You must kill your interpretation firstly to their level. Because if you don't first of all sort them out, the tendency that you are going to appear before Pharaoh, it is an uphill task. So what did Joseph start doing? He started fixing a problem in the, in the immediate environment. And eventually, it, 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 it's a law of fate. You will get before Pharaoh. And you will not need to do more than what you did for the butler and the baker before Pharaoh, yeah. before you are rewarded for it. Yeah. So let's forget this mindset of 
trying to first of all get before Pharaoh. When we are not, when we are not, mm. not doing anything in the dungeon. Yeah. Look at Abraham too. Abraham was believing God mm. for a child. Mm -hmm. He got to the home of Abimelech. Abimelech's wives were barren. Mm -hmm. And God told Abraham that he's a prophet. You see, that's the kind of prophet we're talking about. And God told Abraham, told Melchizedek that if Abraham should pray for all his women, they, they would start having children. Meanwhile, Abraham himself was still believing God for a child. Mm -hmm. So there's a time on the faith lane you have to leave your own problems aside and look for what is going on in the immediate environment where you have found ourselves. What is going on now is that Coronavirus is showing us that our world is susceptible to pandemics and to epidemics. Possibly this is the last. We don't know. Another can happen. <laughs> we don't need to be in this mode when another is happening. Mm. Let's say another possibly will happen. Because, you know, I know the default response of believers. For some people, once I say, if some people say, God forbid. <laughs> See, that, that's not where we are now. Please, let's, let's get out of that. Um, <laughs> Yeah, Let, let's, get, let's get out of religion, please. <laughs> what we are saying is nobody's praying is going to happen, but supposing it happens, we need to learn from this. Because the Bible says there was famine again besides the first famine that were in the days of Abraham. Yeah. For the Bible says there was famine again. That means famine is not straight to the covenant. Mm -hmm. uh, so there could be one again, but now what we're trying to say is that let's start. So all the IT guys who are calling on you by the grace of God, if you're an IT guru, you design websites, you code, you do whatever, you provide solutions, you know, everywhere. All the daily do for years of this world and, you know, all of you, please. This is a time to, to, to be conscious of what is happening. PDM. Okay. Um, I don't know. I think PDK. PDK. Sorry. <laughs> I want to say PDK. PDK, yeah. Amen. Thank you so much, uh, yeah. Pastor. Um, yeah. And I, as, as the talk was going on, you know, what came to my mind is that uh, what we are encouraging ourselves to do yeah. is what we should be doing by default. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be a, a, a default paradigm mm -hmm. as Christians. Um, but I think a lot of times the pressures of life um, has caved us in where, unlike Abraham um, and Joseph, the examples that you cited, who outside of their own limitations uh, were able to lift up their head and help a fellow person who was also in need. Uh, the mindedness of the average uh, believer is probably just the same as any other person who doesn't know God, mm. which is, you know, it's all about just taking care of myself. How do I get by? Uh, to the point where this is the central motivation to even seek God. Mm. It's a central motivation to go um, to prayer. It's a central motivation to go into fasting. So it's me. And so me, on and me, so me, forth. Me, it's me. just to consume all these things upon our own lust. And that is not the way God has sort of designed the system. Um, and like I was uh, sharing on Sunday, um, if, if that is the mindset, if that is the default paradigm, then there is no way that you will be able to get yourself out of the fear and panic mode. Yeah. Uh, because if, you're, if it's just about yourself, like you said, you sneeze, yeah. plus, uh, <laughs> plus fear, it turns to coronavirus <laughs> and all of that. Uh, like someone said, any slight discomfort in any way is an immediate suspicion of, you know, trying to track where you've been, who you've been with, and say, where could I? <laughs> you know, um, you just keep in that cycle. Um, there are people who are afraid of their jobs, uh, livelihood, will salaries be paid? Would I lose my job? You know, a colleague, you know, just messaged, I think that was today, I said the, uh, the sister working in a big multinational in the U.S. has been laid off. You know, they've laid them off in their thousands, laid off wow. without pay. And uh, I think I read somewhere that three million people were added to the jobless uh, uh, counts in the United States. Wow. Um, here in Nigeria, we don't really know how to lay off people. Um, so 
will keep them, you know, and then their salary, uh, owing salaries and all of that. So that usually is the fear. And, you know, if we keep in this paradigm, uh, we'll miss out on a lot of things. Um, what Paul was encouraging Timothy about um, in the book of Second Timothy 1, um, clearly a man who was paralyzed by fear and was trying to encourage him, don't be ashamed of this gospel. I mean, he was looking at Paul who had been trapped and imprisoned by this gospel and, mm. you know, fear was holding him back. Yeah. And he was being encouraged, you know, you have to stir up this gift that I you, you know, and move out there and do ministry. Yeah. But it was a guy who was uh, sort of paralyzed by fear. And what you find is that when you allow this fear to get into you, uh, you cannot experience the move of the Spirit because that's what he's saying there. You, you, you can't hear, you can't see, you can't, you, you feel powerless. Yeah, you don't have a sound mind. Mm. You can't develop solutions and all of that if you, if you let this fear get into you. You just be distracted by yeah. it because um, the Spirit we have received, one of the fundamental pillars there is that is the Spirit of love. Um, and that's why I said this is a default you know, paradigm that every believer and the kind of spirit that we have received should inspire us to, to do is to act in love, mm -hmm. you know, where we are able to reach out to other people, uh, you know, outside of ourselves, seeking to be a blessing to other people, not um, a, a situation where we become isolated and immune um, to the sufferings of people around us where, you know, and I've cited a number of personal examples where um, I'm seeing continually that if we continue to neglect the poor and the needy, as we have, you know, been stating, you know, all along, um, invariably it's, we will create a, a society that is not sustainable. Mm -hmm is not sustainable at all. And I think that is, that is really what we are realizing. That spirit of love that, that, that reaches out to other people, that seeks to develop solutions that will bless nations, um, which should be the primary motivation, not just that I want to be the next billionaire on Forbes list and all of that. Because uh, wealth at the end of the day is, is uh, for God is looking for people who understand mm -hmm. the difference between ownership and, and stewardship. Wow. That I'm a steward of this, yeah. you know, I'm a yeah. custodian here, yeah. and I'm having this in trust. Yeah. And I think it's one of the billionaires, I, I should probably paraphrase what he said, uh, you, you know, that by the time you have this level of resource in your hands, it gets to the point where you understand that it just can't be for you. Wow. You know, it, it, it's, it's almost criminal <laughs> for it to just be for you, you know. <laughs> so, um, and we have a country that's perpetuated a system where we are insulated from, you know, showing love to the needy from the political uh, system down and trickled down to even the average believer on the street is that hustle mentality and what can I get? I remember saying sometime in church that, you see, if I ask any believer today and say, what's the purpose of the wealth that you, that you have desire for? And you just give that answer and say, mm -hmm. well, it's to promote the kingdom. I would say you are not ready. <laughs> you know, if you give me that default answer, then you've not really found mm -hmm. the defining purpose, mm -hmm. you know, that anchor yeah. for your purpose because when you find it you will discover that it's beyond wealth yeah. that all these things will really be added onto you it mm. will come with it but mm. you know how can i seek god and seek you know his vision for me uh one of the things we cannot lose sight of is that we have the spirit of power as well. hallelujah um and i was telling my wife i mean we went and i said i you know um <laughs> As we're going out, I said, well, we're going into the war zone because we're going into places where, you know, this thing can, can break out. You can easily catch this, right? And, um, yeah, do all the protection and all of that, even before leaving home, preparing for when we will get into the house, you know, as responsible citizens. But I told my wife, I said, in spite of all this, <laughs> I don't have the spirit of power. You know, if, if you let fear paralyze you, you forget the fact 
that, you know, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead actually dwells within you Hallelujah. and is capable Hallelujah. of, you know, quickening your mortal body unto, unto strength Hallelujah. and unto healing. That Hallelujah. divine healing is still a provision of the covenant. Hallelujah. Where you are just paralyzed by the fear of, I've caught corona or I will I catch corona, you shouldn't be. Otherwise, you lose sight of that dimension of the spirit that says that the spirit that is with you is a spirit of power. Hallelujah. You know, and, and that power is also part of what you can extend you know, to the world. And I, I, I see it as a mystery that the same hands that, you know, the Bible says you lay hands on the sick and they will recover. It's the same hand that Corona is trying to sort of redraw and say, you know, don't shake yourselves, don't touch, and so on and so forth. And, Hallelujah. you know, we need, to, we need to rise above this fear yeah. as believers because we'll lose sight of what we actually have in store. And what PDA has been sharing is, is that soundness of mind. Yeah. You know, so the Holy Spirit, Hallelujah. the dimension of the Spirit is what you find with Daniel, what you find with Joseph, which is that you have a sound mind. You know, when you, when you open up your mouth to speak or to do things, you are preferring critical solutions to, to issues. You know, and, and the world cannot gainsay you. You know, you are displaying a level of wisdom that is outstanding. And, you know, people will look at it and, you know, you know, other kinds of wisdom will bow to say this is superior uh, wisdom. And we have access to that, you know, by the Spirit. So um, the thing is, let's not lose sight of our heritage in all of this. Um, if, you get, if you let fear get in, you know, which has really been, for me, a major thing throughout all of this. And again, I believe that, just like PDA has said, it's not over. Um, you, you need to have understanding. I, I, I find that there are scriptures, you know, that believers need to understand. That look, if you don't get into a dimension of knowledge of God, you know, you will not be different from the common man who is without God. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and we need to have an understanding of this. The common man, what is the common man doing right now? Are you doing the same thing the common man without God is doing right now? You, you need to question, you know, um, how you are operating in this moment yeah. where the, there's this global pandemic. What's your reaction? You know, is it speaking to what you carry inside or is it negating the fact that you are actually a child of God <laughs> and of the kingdom? Without hope. <laughs> and, and, and really seeking the face of God to say, what really should I be doing now? And like I was saying on Sunday, we have all somewhat taken rest from hustle and bustle of Lagos. Um, people are not going out and coming in, you know. <laughs> you, are, you are there at home. Um, there is less pressure. You are not complaining about traffic and all of that. That capital of time. Are you wise like the men of Issachar to say, what can I deliver with this capital of time that I now have in this moment? You know, and, and I believe that it, it is in such moments like this that some people really will connect to purpose. If, if you are mindful, yeah. some people really will connect deeper to the agenda of God for their lives in this yeah. moment of, you know, some level of quietness. Amen. You know, the capital of time that Amen. you can invest even in praying. I, and, and I'll say this, you know, yesterday evening, um, as was my wife, I, I found that, look, we can actually ramp up, you know, our prayer life. And, wow. and the wisdom came by, you know, some, some, you know, things I just looked at yesterday night, and I'm saying, okay, there's actually no excuse why we can't actually ramp this up, you know, far and above what we have been doing, that even when normal activity resumes, it is clear that there is actually greater latitude Hallelujah. to ramp up prayer. You know, if, if you're not hitting those kind of notes, wow. you know, in this season, then you are wasting the capital of time yeah, that, has that has been delivered to you. And like I said earlier, there is nothing happening 
the world has not gone out of control, yeah. out of the control of God. <laughs> you know, where you are trying to, in the place of prayer, force God to say, God, take control of this, take control. He's going, no, 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 no. Uh, it didn't catch him by surprise. Hallelujah. You know, he, he, he's, he's been in charge, yeah, you know, all through. And as children of God, we need to just have that wisdom. Wow. Thank, that there is something in this time for us. Thank you very much. Thank you. I mean, let me also say here, please, if we have questions, you can send those questions to us. And I'm also saying at any point, you can still invite more people to join us. But the broadcast will be made available after. I think we have a video recording of it. So we will, for those who, as really where it became disjointed, We'll package everything together and reproduce it so everybody can. Now, let's begin to wrap it up. Now, Pastor, you made mention of the capital of time that is given to us. I mean, free rest, free holiday. But for the believer, for the serious minded, it's not free. It, it, it is an investment of God for you to reset, for, it, for you to look at things, for you to have a review. And I'll give us an example. Again, that is buttressing the fact that God gave us this latitude because something greater is about to happen. Yeah. And we must, you know, it was in my write-up, I think the one for three days ago, I said, post-COVID. Let's begin to think post-COVID. Things are not going to be the same again. Yeah. The global economy will never be the same yeah. again. Yeah. Production sites will shift to other parts of the world. You can't help that. This is the first time as a generation we're experiencing ground zero. That everything is altered to, you know, a standstill as it were. Think of this. That is an opportunity on the faith lane. And we look at the faith of our father Abraham again as we wrap, wrap it up. God knew the wars of kings will happen. So, so in the moment in Genesis 14, Abraham had, like we are having now, Abraham did not just sit in his house. Abraham did two strategic things, and that is what this time is all about. Number one, Abraham himself acquired military training. Mm -hmm. Because we were never told Abraham was a soldier. Mm -hmm. Within that latitude of time also, Abraham trained 318 others. Mm -hmm. So this season of waiting is a season for capacity building. Mm -hmm. Please, study more. Pray more. At least for those of us who are career people, you've always been complaining that it's your work that's not allowing you to study, that's not allowing you to pray. Because we all have to be part of this next development of God on the face of the earth post-COVID-19. So like Abraham, build your own private army. Build a private equity. Mm -hmm. You don't join this battle because you pray in tongues. You join this battle because you have an army. And a private one at that. So within this time that we're all resting at home, what are you building? Mm. Building capacity. And, and that's what praying in tongues is all about. But we're, we're saying, don't just wait and never pray in tongues. The more we pray in tongues, let's also trust God for structures like social enterprises mm -hmm. that we can come up with on the face of the earth. So Abraham started training these guys. Abraham started training this guy. Abraham started training this guy. So what, what do we need to do as sons of Abraham this season? Training. We're training. Wow. We're training. We're acquiring a, a, a kind of training. Maybe before you're an IT person, God can say, start looking at music. You're a music person, God can say, start looking at this. Young people also like Toluwade. God can say, start paying attention to this Toluwade. Nobody's too young. That is what it means to have your 318. Like the children now, before, you know, now that they are told now, yesterday I called all of them and I gave them an assignment. I give them a portion of scripture they have to memorize. And by tomorrow, they have to recite it to me. And they know they have to. So, you know, we wouldn't do that ordinarily. But you see, this season is capacity building. So don't just say, oh my, let me be resting. And you are yawning. At the end of it all, post-COVID is going to call for one thing. Where, where's your 318? And what is the indicator? They will just tell you that Lot has been captured. You see, Lot has been captured is the name of the game. <laughs> because the capturing of Lot is a challenge to what you did with this time. Mm. If you don't do anything at this time, you won't respond to the capturing of Lot. Yeah. Capturing of Lot can be the next pandemic that will happen on the face of the earth. But, but you see, the Bible now described, Peter described Lot. I like the description Peter gave Lot. Mm. He said, it is that righteous man 
vexing his righteous soul daily. See, there, there is somebody in Lagos crying daily. His soul is vexed. And all he just needs for some people is to create an intervention that can give poor people 500 naira a day. I'm just using that as an example. And that is what you are spending this time to do, to learn finances at a level that you can reach out to this lot that has been captured. Mm. So economically, lot is being captured. What we are seeing now that we call coronavirus is lot being captured, uh, you know, medically. Yeah. Mm. It's also being captured socially, economically. IT-wise, lot is being captured <laughs> across the board, even church-wise. And that's another thing, folks. Church cannot be the same again. Mm -hmm. You see, this latitude we've had now, whether you like it or not, is resetting the church. Exactly. And there are three kinds of people. You see, we, it, it's the truth. There are some who will miss out on this because they are not prepared for it. But let's leave that so that people will not... I don't want to send a panicky mode across the airwave. But what we are saying is that, okay, lot is being captured. So in, look, at, look at when it now makes sense. They came to Abraham and they said, lot has been captured immediately. Abraham mobilized his forces. Abraham now started playing where kings are playing. Look, you can look at Brigade, Dangote. There, there is a way you prepare. That the moment you step out, you play in the King's Dale. That place is called King's Valley. That means if you are not a king, you can't play at that level. But you see, Abraham did not, did, there was no coronation to make Abraham a king. Yeah. But if you come with forces, yeah. Oh, my God. There's a way you show up in the battlefront yeah. that even kings will acknowledge you. They'll just say, this guy is some kind of king. And you know what? <laughs> Look at, before you could say Jack Robinson, just like what Pastor David was saying, Abraham conquered. Yeah. In fact, in Hebrews 7, I like the way Hebrews 7 put it. He said, when Abraham was returning from the slaughter. Oh, imagine Abraham slaughtered. Of course, we don't want to say that to scare everybody, you know, <laughs> within the context within which we're saying that. Abraham conquered kings. Mm. That is what Pastor Did was saying. You see, we could look at ourselves. Mm. And we are given to the spirit of fear like the rest of the world. And we forget the fact that this Abrahamic thing in us is capable of conquering kings. Mm. Yeah. It's capable of conquering territories. Mm. These are other kings, you can call them the coronavirus of their time. In, afflicting everybody, inflicting everybody. Imagine Abraham also played the game of self-preservation. And guess what? Pastor who was Abraham fighting for? Lot. Lot. He wasn't even for Isaac. He was Lot. Lot that did not treat Abraham very well. Lot that perhaps even after Abraham fought for him, never came around to say thank you to Abraham. Just like past days, Abraham got to that point that it wasn't anything personal again. If this is the will of God on the face of the earth, and guess what? Look at the greater good, because we are talking about how to transact on the faith lane. The greater good was not even Abraham coming out to fight for a lot. That was the bait. We must understand the bait God is offering us this season for the greater good. Mm. The greater good was Abraham was going to meet Melchizedek. Mm. You see, this order of Melchizedek is the Eden dimension in all these things we're talking about. Because mm -hmm. I was telling PD, PD hey, when we were talking the other day, I said the question we should be asking ourselves is that where is Abraham in all this? Mm -hmm. Once we find the Abrahamics in all this, it will begin to make sense. Mm -hmm. So what is the hidden dimension? Somebody must break into the other maker. And you don't break into in the other maker if you don't have an unusual love walk. So what Abraham manifested there is the height of faith. That mm -hmm. is faith that works by love. Mm -hmm. Love is that I'm doing something for a fellow human being, whether they deserve it or not, so that I can break out of this greedy, selfish, me, 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 me dimension and break into an order that produces the Lord Jesus Christ, which is the order of Melchizedek. So Melchizedek was waiting there to receive Abraham. But Melchizedek did not go to Abraham's home to say, Abraham, come, come, come. Mm -hmm. It was the unusual love walk. Mm -hmm. Love walk. The Abraham did not want to hear somebody was captured. And, and you can say somebody was captured, just like Pastor Jesus said. You can just say, oh, Lord, we restore everyone that is captured. At a level, your prayer <laughs> is your 318 people. Mm. At a level, just like the Lord taught in Matthew 6, prayer is not a statement. Mm. Prayer is an act. Mm. That means a man that shows up in the war front with 318 people is praying. 
He's praying. Because mm. nobody can just say, oh, Lord, let Lord be captured. Let Lord, we, we release Lord. All these people that capture Lord, you see, we are, we are praying. But at a level, that is not how to pray. At a level, the prayer is to come up and mobilize your forces. And Abraham did that, conquered those kings. And at the juncture of it, or Melchizedek was waiting. You see, it's, 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 it's there. Abraham was the only human being on the face of the earth to interact with Melchizedek. No other person did. There's no record. Mm -hmm. Any other person. That means the dimension God is taking us into is a rare dimension. That eventually when the Lord was going to come, is the psalm still okay? Are we fine? He came as a priest. And the high priest after the order makes it. Now let's, let's break down that order. And we just close there. And the two PDs will, uh, PD and PDK will give their final uh, charge. My final charge is this. In this order, you can't just be a priest. You must be a king and a priest at the same time. That means in as much as we are praying, that's our priesthood, there must be an execution. Wow. There must be an executive power that you have as a king. So my priesthood is that, yes, I'm praying, I'm careful, I'm, I, I don't want to, you know, I'm maintaining all the social distance, you know, whatever. But I must also realize that I'm a king. That where the word of a king is, there's power. That I'm an executor. I have executive power. If I don't move, certain imbalances will never be corrected on the face of the earth. Lot is gone forever. So we have a dual responsibility to secure the environment spiritually, but also secure the environment because we are kings. And it is this order that produced our Lord Jesus Christ. He came as an high priest after the order of Melchizedek. So, so that therefore we will not just hide behind the umbrella of priesthood alone. We are priests, but we are also kings. And there, there's a time, situation we demand more for our priesthood when there's no plague. <laughs> there's a time situation we demand for both when there's a plague you can't just say you're a priest you must also be a king you must also go out there and fight the war you must also go out there and get the spoils of war you must also go out there and interact with Melchizedek you must leave the king of Sodom who is just asking you to meet your immediate needs. He said, take the people mm -hmm. in all those exchange, trade by barter, kind of transaction people do that I need to pay my rent. We must meet Mercury. And it's called the power of an endless life. That means our life cannot end because there is crisis in the city. It's an endless life. In as much as yet we are here, we're also building capacity. And we're getting ready for the next thing God wants to do on the face of the earth. And it was because Abraham understood this principle. He was able to work with Anna, Eskol, and Mamre. These guys were not believers. Mm. But Abraham needed that strategic relationship with these people. Abraham did not... See, let, let's, this battle, they were in confederate with Abraham. Abraham did not just go to this battle by himself. Anna, Anna supported him, Mamre, and Eskol. These guys were with Abraham. So it was the king in him that was able to connect with other guys, and they were able to fight where kings fight. So we're saying... Yes, prophecy, that is the priesthood. Wise men and scribes, that's the kingship. Yeah. And mm. this king thing is very, very important mm. because another person, and possibly the only person in scripture that manifested this was David. He was a king and a priest at the same time. He was a king who wore the linen effort. And because of that, David was able to execute the agenda of God on the face of the earth. In as much as he was fighting literally and physically, he was also writing Psalms. Everything was intact. And that's why God said, as a man after my heart. So our job is cut out for us. We must pray accurately. We must receive solutions by the power of the Spirit. We must understand that for such a time as this, God brought us into the kingdom. And we must up our faith work. We must never forget we're on the faith lane. PD, eh? final word. Thank you, PD. Yeah. <laughs> I think you have already sealed the day. And um, I, um, the question again for everyone is to ask ourselves. Do we have questions? Um, are, okay. we, are, we, are we restarting or are we hibernating? <laughs> you know.
it's a computer thing. You hibernate because you just want to like, okay, <laughs> let me just continue from where I stopped. You know, so are we, uh, is it an hibernation or is it actually a, a restart, you know, to just level the whole memory and, and load new programs, you know? So we're really hoping that, okay, um, we can see this as a restart, you know? And also drawing from what uh, Fazeli has said about priesthood, I'm also a firm believer that most people cannot even come into the full capacity of their priesthood when they don't even understand the operational dynamics of their kingship, you know? And if you look at the case of Abraham, for example, why did Melchizedek show up after that strategic alignment? Why not before? You mm. know, why not before? Yeah. Because you can't, the priesthood is actually much more powerful than the kingship, but it's, it's not something God, people think, oh, but prayer every day, sleeping, I mean, you know, spiritual activities is priesthood. No, it, it's a lot deeper than yeah, that. Yeah. So priesthood will only be erected if you have found, you know, a, a tread in God's purpose, you know, wow. that is critical to his operations on the face of the earth, and you have connected your heart and your life to that direction, then you have a priesthood. Yeah. You know, just like what Pastor Dele said, I mean, for Abraham, it was a quest of love. How a man who has nothing to gain from someone is able to unleash his resources just to save a life, you know? At that point, when it came to that alignment, um, his priesthood was found. So Melchizedek just had to show up, you know, and, you know, priesthood was erected immediately. So um, in the midst of all of this, of course, my prayer is that God will take us to um, our priesthood individually. We will find, because we were saying that this is not, you know, you see a lot of men go, oh, people praying now. Ah, Lord, take corona away, take corona away. It, that is not the priesthood. Mm -hmm. the, the priesthood will is an interception of understanding that divine purpose and what God is saying at this very point in time, you know, because that's where you're going to find priesthood. If you look at David, when the plague hit all of them, David did not go to the temple and say, please, well, let's pray, let's pray. Let, they didn't pray the plague away. It was just one sight. Once he saw that place and he offered sacrifice on that altar, you know, the thing was actually subsided. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's not what we should be praying and what should be telling leaders now is that, or what we should tell ourselves is that, okay, what are those don't just come on TV and say, okay, the thing will pass. But there is something the Lord it wants the leaders and every one of us to individually, you know, connect with. Those activities must be, so it's not, it's not just, uh, oh, this will pass, that will pass. Yes, it will pass. It will pass. It will pass. But after, that is not the right prayer passed. to pray, yes. What do we do? The right prayer is that what is the Lord saying to me? What is yeah. the Lord saying to the yeah. leaders of the world right now? And what is the Lord saying to the Amen. leaders of the body? Mm -hmm. You know, and we should... Uh, yeah, someone as young as Toluani, Tol you can be the one God is telling those directions. Don't yeah. think it's for daddies and mummies. Right now, out of the mouth of babes and suckling, the Lord has ordained strength. Mm. You know, Christ at 12 started to confront. I think the, the fact that we don't know that as believers we can confront the systems of the day is also mm. limiting us. You yeah. know? I'm, not, I'm not someone that is used to tweeting to leaders. But all of a sudden, recently, I've just been, I'll just take um, the governor of Lagos and, you know, just document my views. I say, you know, we, I don't even care whether I read it or not, but I just realized that it's important we found our, our voice. Yeah, you yeah. Know, find our voice. Let's see what the Lord is um, putting in our hearts. And, uh, our and supposing Abraham was afraid that well, if I go into this battle, what of if I'm killed? No, not on the faith lane. You are secured. And that's why God said, I'm your shield. I'm your exceeding great reward. We have to understand that this lane... Uh, it comes with a lot of insurances. <laughs> yeah. And you, for as long as you are doing that purpose of God on the face of the earth, you are protected beyond terror. Amen. Mm -hmm. So no evil will be for you. No yeah. plague will come near your dwelling. Yeah. PD. PD <laughs> Amen. Um, well, I'll just close with um, the thoughts that has also been shared and it's 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 um don't put your life on stop on stop mode and um, i like what pda said about the priesthood is not praying corona away as it were it's okay to pray uh, about that uh but we need to move to a higher level of abstraction just as we have said even in the days of noah noah didn't start to pray that the rain should not come or that the flood should not come yeah. but he you built know, an ark, he built an ark mm. to the saving of himself and you know his household and even to as many as would have listened yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. 
but just, they just never thought anything like that mm -hmm. would happen because it's never happened before. Um, I think it's to move to a higher level of, of abstraction and understand that, um, um, like I said in time past, you know, the priesthood is, is the spiritual framework that sort of undergirds your effectiveness as a king in the marketplace. There is, uh, there is no king of substance and of status that, you know, doesn't have a priesthood that is under guarding it. And, you know, as believers, as we move to, to take on mountains and to uh, do things for the kingdom, we must understand that this is also a time to strengthen our priesthood, Amen. To, to, uh, to offer up spiritual sacrifices Amen. unto God. So it's the, it's the priest that anoints the king for office, you know, scripturally pouring oil on their head and, and, and all of that. But now we have these two in one yeah. because this is now our lineage. We yeah. are kings and priests at the same time. So yeah. you're, you are primarily your own priest, you know, not your pastor, some prophet here and there. You are primarily your own priest. And this is a good time not just to sit back and think in your own mind to say, what do I need to do? But it's time to strengthen that priesthood and say, God, what would you have me do in this time? So don't put your life on pause and praying and waiting for the wave to, to go away. You will miss out on a lot of things. Hallelujah. It's time to actually start to do something that is at the heart of God for you. And that is to strengthen your priesthood in terms of, you know, ensuring that the vision is clear, is stronger, is more vivid, um, and, and to locate really what God will have you do in this time. Thank God for, you know, prayers going on uh, about the pandemic, but also you must, you know, seek the face of God and his purpose at this time. Hallelujah. Well, finally, on a final note, Melchizedek came as a king of righteousness and as a king of peace. And without father, without mother, without beginning of days or end of life. So that means it is called, there's no precedence. And that's what this season is calling for, unprecedented personas. <laughs> Persona that must come on this scene. Look at what that situation triggered, an unprecedented persona just came up on the scene by the name Melchizedek, unprecedented. For the first time, you, you, are, you are not sure, who is this guy without father, without mother? But, but he did two things, king of righteousness. I mean, look at that combination. Righteousness is a force of the kingdom. Peace is a force of the kingdom. But this guy, permit me to use that word, king did. <laughs> he said, I'm the king of, you will have told king, you will have said, I'm the king of England. That would make sense or king of Elisha, king of Abelkta. But this guy said, righteousness is more than what you think it is. To survive this season, I must scale it up. I must be the king of righteousness. That means righteousness itself is a domain that must be given execution this time. I'm also the king of peace. That's what we're saying, don't be afraid. Within this um, faith lane, there is the ability to also king peace. <laughs> king of peace. And, and if you look at what he now gave Abraham, he gave him bread and wine. That's a type of the Holy Spirit. If you join all that together, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit, that's the kingdom of God. So that means all that we are saying is that it's time to be kingdom-minded. And when you are kingdom-minded, the first thing it drives away is greed, me. And what it does is to begin to establish the purpose of God in the face of the earth. In Jesus' name. Let me seize the opportunity to thank everyone that joined us for this telecast. I mean, we've had a lot of people I've seen. Thank you very much. And uh, we appreciate your involvement. And those who are with us here in the studio, thank you very much. And uh, the next broadcast will be Sunday morning across our different centers. Uh, Pastor Mori, Pastor Deji, and um, all our pastors, both in Lagos, Abuja, and Ibadan will be, you know, broadcasting lives from their various centers. We, 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 we 
Uh, the baptizing church, we have many centers. In Lagos, we have four centers. And we have um, centers in the cities of Abuja and Ibadan. Um, so in Lagos, 9 a.m., all the centers, who, apart from First Act, will be broadcasting by 9 a.m. So you want to join um, Lekki's TBC, Sphere of Influence, TBC Lekki. Um, Maryland is uh, out of Zion. Um, Yaba is TBC PowerPoint. So you can join any of these three centers. Then by 2 p.m. on Sunday, we'll do the broadcast for TBC Festival. And that is uh, because we just started last week. And uh, so we still do 2 p.m. So we're going to have that by 2 p.m. And we're looking forward again to how God will help us this season to be able to do more of this. I myself have been blessed and I've been edified. Let me also seize the opportunity to thank everyone since midnight. I've been receiving calls, text messages, whatever. I think this is a very good time to thank everyone uh, for being part of my birthday, for wishing me a very wonderful birthday. I've been, I've tried to read some of the messages. You know, it's not possible to read all, and I won't deceive you, because if I want to read all, that would be a full-time ministry. Uh, but I, I've read some, I've seen some, but. I want to appreciate everyone. Thank you for your love. Thank you for even reaching out to me at all. I appreciate it. Some people have sent money. Thank you for the funds. My bank was just being credited all day. <laughs> Thank you very much. I, I love you. And some people even brought cake to the studio. <laughs> they want us to cut cake. I mean, social distancing. <laughs> I'll go to cake. I'll go to cake with... I just invite the pastors to join me and, and we, 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 we do the cutting of the cake and uh, hallelujah, praise God forevermore. Amen. Well, since they brought the cake to, to, the, to the setting, we just have to cut it. So I'm going to invite Pastor Murray to join me. She's somewhere there. Um, I think we're right. <laughs> and uh, we just do the cutting of the cake. And for those of you who are watching us, we'll send yours <laughs> via technology. <laughs> By, mail. By mail. So, I mean, I don't know who's going to help us, but man or Tafa will do, please. Just help us to preside over the cutting of the cake. I'm not and, uh, for this Pastor, please join us. Let's just... <laughs> 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 let, let's do it in twos. Can we spread? I mean, no, let, let's do it in twos. Because of social justice. <laughs> so that they see that we are law abiding. <laughs> but my husband and wife can. Let's yes, of course, course, my wife. We're still on the same line. All right, praise the Lord. So, um, I, I think we just say happy birthday, PD. We thank you for being a blessing. I particularly, my life would never have been the same without you. Uh, thank you, sir, for being a blessing. God. I, I'm sorry I don't send messages because I know you read it. So I rather just I look for I look for other platforms to express my yeah you know done I'll do it my own way. I don't mind me I mean, you read it. All right, so J E S U S. Uh, once you get to the S, the last S, then we'll just cut the cake. All right. I mean, which other name would you rather? Okay. All right. Okay. One, two, three, go. J. <laughs> Can I get it? E S U S. Jesus. So where is uh, PDA, PDK? Okay, like one, like one meter. Okay. That kind of operation, but it's very joining. Hallelujah. It's a case of Thank Esther. We're going to get out. Just put your hand. Just put your hand. Just go. All right. All right. So, one, yes, one, two, go. All right, another picture. Thank you, sir. You can call the live stream from there. Thank you very much. God bless you. The dress is just okay. We're off. <laughs> All right. There's no camera. All right. On to go. Picture. All right. So you can take it, please. Let's cut it. Let everybody have something. Please, before you go, please have something. So, Brian, what happened?